What's up guys? Welcome back to Newswave. So it turns out there's some serious issues around Anthem outside of the game itself as several people are actually reporting that there is some issues in terms of crashing and possible bricking of their systems when playing Anthem. We're going to kind of go over where all that's coming from today. And then we're also going to talk a bit about Left Alive, which unfortunately hasn't had the best reception in Japan so far and it's out today. So we'll kind of take a look at, uh, I, I guess, how all of that has turned out. And then we also talk about Saints Row Third, as it's actually getting a bit more of a comprehensive port than even I originally thought uh, with THQ Nordic checking it out and, you know, moving stuff over. As always, guys, enjoy these videos. Hit the like button. It does help out. We're actually going to start today with Devil May Cry 5 because, well, the embargo is actually up tomorrow. So if you check out Devil May Cry 5 on Metacritic, it will actually be up. The embargo will be. And you can check out its reviews and ratings at 11 a.m. Eastern Time or 8 a.m. Pacific time. So make sure you check that out because there's been a lot of questions as to how things like the microtransactions, for example, will kind of fit into play, the length of the game, the difficulty, and obviously the need to play back through it several times. Will all of that work in 2019? That's going to be the question with Devil May Cry 5. I think the part that I'm most curious about is how the, the ore purchasing will actually work into the game because the demo was really fun. I actually liked it. It still had that good Devil May Cry uh, difficulty, the combos and everything, and the speed. It was all there. It's just going to come down to how everything else works out around it with the storefront and everything they put out. Also, if you haven't had a chance to play Demon X Machina off of the eShop where they put kind of the test missions out there so we could try it out and leave feedback, you might want to download it and try it out soon because according to Japanese Nintendo, they spotted it in the survey that that will actually be pulled from the eShop March 11th. And we played it here on the channel. We had a full video and discussion on it and we liked some of it, but there were, there were some parts they had to work on, whether it was the visual style, the frame rate, or just the overall controls and concept of, of some of the weapons and the armor and everything. And then there was a lot of stuff we liked as well. So I hope that this does end up helping them in the long run, you know, to have, uh, I guess, just in general, this big test mission to try everything out and see what needs work. And we're, we're apparently going to see it in the next few months over the summer. It's supposed to release. Could be the back end of the summer since we just did like the beta. So maybe in like August, it'll be slated for release. But I'm glad they did this. Just make sure you get a chance to download it and play it. It wasn't even like a massive download so it doesn't take up that much space but you might want to try it out beforehand because once it's gone well, I, I assume there won't be another demo and we'll basically just roll up to release. We also had a game announced for the Switch that was kind of out of nowhere. Now we of course saw the Dead by Daylight announcement during the Direct, which seemed okay I guess. The visuals looked a little bad and it wasn't running great. But now we see Friday the 13th, which is a bit out of left field and I kind of talk about why, uh, being announced now for the Switch. Sometime this spring, they've called it the Ultimate Slasher Edition. And what's interesting about this situation with uh, Friday the 13th is there is some litigation involved here. Yeah, the, the team behind, the studio behind Friday the 13th and the, the original screenwriter are kind of battling it out over the IP of Friday the 13th. And I wasn't sure if it would even go anywhere else. People have been thinking they're not going to have any extra content or anything. But after an interview with Variety where they actually put out the announcement, it looks like it's not only going to release on the Switch, but it's going to also come with all release content and paid DLC. That includes every Jason Kill Pack, both Counselor Clothing Packs and the Emote Party Pack. And that's actually great to see that because, of course, I, we don't know if anything else is going to show up in this at all because of what's going on around it. But the fact that they're able to get this over to the Switch, I'm also curious how they will make this work. There's supposed to be a lot of teamwork involved here when you're kind of playing as uh, the weaker characters as opposed to Jason. You're supposed to be able to kind of work together. And I'm trying to think if they'll be able to do voice chat because if they can't, it is going to be significantly harder than it would be with the other versions where you have voice chat. But we, of course, know that there is uh, the SDK out there now for people to use it. And I'll be curious if, hey, maybe they decided, yeah, we'll go ahead and use that, have voice chat kind of integrated, and then you can, of course, talk to people while you plan out your escape. And guys, some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. We're going to start right away with Anthem, well, on the PS4, and I guess the Xbox One. I, I have my own take on that part, but allegedly there is some serious issues going on with the PS4 and Anthem, where people are playing it and it's crashing. And when they say crash, they don't necessarily mean that it just 
you know, does that error code, which you've probably seen at some point in time with your PlayStation 4, your Xbox, or even your Switch, I've seen it with all three of them, where it just kind of kicks you out of the game, you go back to your dashboard, and it's like error, you know, game stopped or whatnot. Sometimes with the PlayStation 4 gives us this ridiculously long error code and message and everything, but it looks like it's actually just shutting the system off, and initially when I heard this, I figured it was overheating the system, you know, just straight up, like the system just cannot keep up, and it shuts itself down due to thermal conditions, and it's happened several times before with other games, but this seems to be something that is popping up all over the Reddit now. So all over the subreddit for Anthem, people are posting several different posts. Several of them were actually pointed out by places like GameIndustry.biz, Kotaku, they were kind of putting them all together. And you could see they were describing a similar issue, but kind of in different ways. Some were saying it would actually back out and then restart the system, and then it would go into like the, the mode on the PlayStation 4 where it has to fill up a bar and check your system and do the hard drive rebuild and everything. Other times it was like it just pulled the power cord completely out. This is a bit of a problem because a few people have also reported that their system is just bricked. Now, if it shuts down and the hard drive has an issue or the OS just corrupts, yeah, you could you could see a brick. It's very possible. Who knows what's going on in the background at the time? It could have been there could have been an update going on for Anthem or even just the system itself when it when it's uh, when it's booting up or something. So there are situations where it could be shut off and actually affect the system to where you have a brick. But it's an odd situation to see this because Anthem already has enough of its own issues and I've been playing it and I did have, uh, at one play session I did, about three or four hours, the thing would actually cut off of the, of the Xbox One. It would take me back to the dashboard and completely freeze. And that happened about four times in the time of about two to three hours. And the last hour I was playing, it didn't do it anymore, but it kept doing it. And I thought it was this, this really weird situation where for some reason Anthem, which takes forever to load, then cuts out and goes back to the dashboard. Seriously, I mean, it, it, it's really frustrating because you know you're in for another five to six minutes of just loading constantly. I feel like when the first time I loaded into that game and I got past that load bar, I should have gotten an achievement for that. It should have popped an achievement and said, congratulations, you actually sat through that load screen and you're in Anthem now. It really is frustrating to sit all through all that every time I want to play it, but I said I'm going to beat it because it's Bioware and I am probably a two-thirds of the way through the game at this point, and it's feeling uh, kind of boring and kind of a grind. But anyway, this is a bit of an issue. And what's interesting about this situation is Sony must be aware of something when it comes to this because they have actually been issuing refunds a bit easier than usual. Again, several people have actually posted in those, re in those Reddit threads that there has been less of a struggle from Sony when it comes to refunds. Generally, Sony will turn you down pretty much all the time. Like, it's not easy to get a refund from them. It's easier to get one from Microsoft. They just, half the time, will just give you a refund even if you've played, like, hours of the game. Sony won't usually do that, but they have been refunding a bit more than usual for Anthem, so I do wonder if even they know about something going on when it comes to system crashes or even bricks. It's a different situation because of Anthem and EA and Bioware and the launch and the mess that is Anthem right now, but we'll see if they fix it, if they have any kind of statement about it, what was causing it, and if people, I guess, can get taken care of for their bricked PS4s, or maybe there's a fix, maybe it's something where you have to actually wipe the hard drive by plugging in a USB like you, we've had to do before. But Anthem, of course, is a live service, so all of your stuff should be saved to the cloud and you just sign back in. Not a great situation, though. Anthem's already been under fire for a while, and now we're dealing with people's systems just not working because of Anthem. Next up, let's talk about Trine 4. As it has been announced, they put out a full trailer for it. It looked like Trine. Now, Trine was an action, uh, adventure, platforming, puzzle-solving, 2D side-scrolling game that released back in 2009, and this would be the fourth iteration of it. Now, one through three is available. They're actually putting it in, like, this collector's pack alongside the fourth one but what's weird about this is it's not going to be available on the switch in that package and it, it is an odd situation they have responded to some people on twitter saying that they, they would like to put it out like that but they don't have anything to announce at this time and that was i saw this, this as a little frustrating for some people because the big ultimate edition for other platforms like the playstation 4 the xbox one or the pc is 50 dollars, which has the fourth one whereas if you have the switch to get one through three which i believe is a gamestop exclusive that is 40 dollars, and then you buy trine 4 for 30 so it ends up costing you 
$70 instead of 50 so we're kind of dealing with another situation of switch tax in that case but they have talked about how they would like to be able to do that so maybe they they still have some time to introduce uh, this whole collector's pack. Next up, let's talk about Saints Row the Third on the Nintendo Switch. Now, we already know it's coming out May 10th. We talked about the release date uh, last week when it was announced by THQ Nordic before they went on their whole uh, AMA spree, and that kind of got lost a bit. But we actually saw a new listing on Amazon that talks a bit more about some of the features and the multiplayer. Yeah, they're going to have multiplayer in this one, which is good because... I wasn't sure how far they would go with this. See, THQ Nordic, I didn't know if they would just kind of move it over, just a single player and everything. It sounds like they're moving, like, everything over. And I want to point one other thing out. When I played Sphinx on the Switch with THQ Nordic's uh, port of it, it retained, like, all of, like, the PC settings for the most part. Like, they had a ton of stuff that I didn't expect. So it'll be interesting to take a look at the options and the graphical settings on this version of the game when it goes to the Switch, just to see if they play around with it at all. But you're seeing the Amazon listing here, courtesy Nintendo Enthusiast, who actually had this all uh, sectioned up for us. It says, portable over-the-top co-op, fly solo or play online with a homie for, and for the first time, two players can play side-to-side -side via online or local multiplayer. Give Naked Skydiving a try, landing in your partner's flaming pickup as you make a suicide run toward a heavily armed syndicate brothel. Uh, Steelport is more fun with a friend. Yeah, the game is that ridiculous. You, that's literally a passage from their Amazon uh, listing, and I can tell you the game is very over the top And that, well, that actually describes the game pretty well, believe it or not, but it does say local co-op, but it doesn't say how. It doesn't say split screen, so maybe you have to have two Switch systems and two copies of the game Maybe they have split screen. I know with the other versions of the game, they did have co-op, but you needed, I believe, multiple copies and multiple systems. So I have a feeling it's going to be like LAN play or wireless LAN with the Switch. But if you've never played Saints Row the Third and you're having like this, maybe you, maybe you want to play a Grand Theft Auto game, like getting kind of the urge to play that on your Switch. Saints Row the Third is a good game. Uh, you're going to have to decide if it's something you want to uh, buy into, if you think the price is a bit higher for it. But but uh, it, it is a good game. I like the idea of them adding in the co-op and everything. That's really cool. It's going to be local and online. And I don't know if they'll do anything with voice chat with that. But still, the fact they have it in there, we have to see how it's also going to run, what it looks like. We actually don't know as much about this game as I would like to, considering it's coming out in May. So in a few months, it'll be out. But of course, we'll check it out here on the channel, see what we have. And maybe we'll even try the online co-op and everything. Because actually, THQ Nordic has sent us uh, codes for pretty much everything at this point. I'm actually playing Dark Siders right now, and that thing's not even out till like, next month. So uh, I'll actually have a video on that as well for you guys. But there you go. Look forward to Saints Row the Third with online and local uh, co-op multiplayer on May 10th. And with our last bit of news, let's talk about Left Alive. It's out today, and I haven't really heard a lot about it. I mean, we've seen some stuff released in terms of trailers and some gameplay here and there, but I haven't seen any reviews yet until at least now. Frontline JP actually put out a review for it, it wasn't stellar. It wasn't great. Now, I looked at this game, and it has, of course, that uh, Metal Gear artwork and stuff around it, which was kind of neat. It looked, looked pretty cool. It is a successor, I guess you'd say, to the Front Mission series. It's Front Mission 3 being the last one that I remember playing. And here comes Left Alive, but Frontline JP gave it a 55 out of 100, and it they they beat this thing down pretty good. It 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 doesn't sound like it's going to be that great of a game, and I've actually talked to a few other people who are playing it, and... They're not having a great time with it, so uh, sadly, it doesn't sound like this is going to be a big game from Square. It sounds like it's going to just kind of be just kind of pushed out the door, and I don't think they're going to talk about it that much. They might say it's out now, but anyway, uh, Frontline GP had a few things to say about it, such as, while the idea of having a survival game set in a modern sci-fi setting with the player going up against overwhelming odds seems like a sound concept. Left Alive, unfortunately, does not manage to execute it very well to the point that many might go so far as to say that it failed. The story too feels needlessly convoluted with its focus on conspiracy and twists and also fails to really define its characters, both protagonists who feel shallow and antagonists who partake in outright, outrightly cartoon-like villainy and have unsatisfying resolutions. Yeah, unfortunately it sounds like the controls aren't great, the stealth aspects aren't good, 
It just sounds like, I, I don't know, maybe they were just a little too crazy with the game and the idea of it. Maybe they, they just had this idea that they just couldn't grasp completely. But we'll see. I'll check it out for myself. I said I was going to pick it up anyway, and I will, and I guess I'll give my impressions on it. I'm going to grab it on the PlayStation 4, and I'm sure I'll have some stuff to say about it on the Spawncast this weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about today, whether it is trying for are you picking it up? Are you a fan of the others? Or are you just getting like the ultimate collection to play them one through four straight up? What about Anthem Bricking Systems? Are you playing it now? And have you been having issues of your own? I'm curious your experiences there. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.